There are rare genetic risk groups that develop these tumors at a very high frequency, but these rare genetic risk groups are directly responsible for only about 5 to 7 or 8 percent of all colorectal cancer. The vast majority of these cancers are really predominantly determined by the pattern of dietary exposure over a lifetime, which interacts with genetic factors. So we've used this mouse model to study how these changes caused by the diet in what appears to be the normal tissue of the colon, in fact, sets that colon up to develop tumors. We've been studying this looking at a Western-style diet. So for instance, fat was increased, calcium and vitamin D were decreased, and these other components were also decreased. If you take the colon out and just look at it microscopically, it looks normal, just like a normal individual's colon. But if you begin to look deeper, you find there are many changes. We know that the stem cells usually stay at the bottom of the crypt, and then their daughter cells, when they divide, their daughter cells move up and populate the rest of the mucosa. That's the way the tissue works. What we found is that the stem cells stay at the bottom of the crypt when you feed this Western diet, but that the daughter cells, which normally move out, don't move out. They stay there. And so those cells, which are now stem cells and daughter cells at the bottom of the crypt, have unusual properties. We think it has to do with mutation and other abnormal signals.